everyone, it is Candace Dickinson here, Artistic Director at Heart, and I am so excited to be sitting down with the amazing Terry Martin to talk about our upcoming production of Inherit the Wind. Now, Terry, I want to start out with talking about why you submitted this show, because this was actually, uh, he came to me and said, you know, this is a title I have always wanted to direct, so tell us a little bit about why. Yeah, um, this is a show that I did in college, um, when, you know, lots of us are learning about the world and, mm -hmm. and all the new ways to think about the world and see the world, and um, the play really resonated with me. Um, and uh, I've been wanting to do it actually in this area since yeah. I moved here eight years ago um, and finally um, got the opportunity, realized that um, the actors at heart, um, the, the, the uh, amazing um, uh, age differences, you know, mm -hmm. from children to old and the wealth of actors that you have here in the area. Um, was really going to make this um, possible to do a really solid production of the show. Yeah, yeah, and then he gave me the script, I read it, and I've shared this with a few people, but it was just incredible. I literally couldn't put it down. I was, no joke, late to a meeting because <laughs> I could <laughs> not put it down. I was just like, they're going to have to wait. I have to figure out what this ending is. So it is such a great show. I can see why you wanted to direct it. So Yeah, cool. it's yeah. one of those plays like The Crucible, mm -hmm. um, which you know, was a parable on, you know, the, the times mm -hmm. um, and and the fundamentalism of the time mm -hmm. um, and the restrictions, you know, on, on thinking and women and everything of the time. Um, we have the same thing here. Um, both these plays were written uh, in the same era in the 50s um, as an attack on McCarthyism, mm -hmm. um, which was basically saying, you know, you, you either believe, you know, yep. this one thing or you're not you're not American and we'll put you in jail mm -hmm. right um, and it was the Red Scare um, so they looked at the story of you know this young teacher uh, just across the mountains in Tennessee mm -hmm. who taught uh, in 1925 who had taught evolution um, to his classroom and was thrown in jail for for uh, breaking a law that Tennessee had in place that mm -hmm. no nothing besides biblical creationism could be taught okay. in schools uh, and so this became, you know, a national case, one of those um, uh, cases of the century. And um, it showed to everyone um, that uh, everyone has the right to think, mm -hmm. right? And the right to be wrong, yeah. right? So um, you, can, you can educate yourself on creationism. You can educate yourself on Darwinism. You have that right, mm -hmm. right? And... Whichever way you think, you have the right to be wrong. I yeah. have the right to be wrong. You have the right to be wrong. Um, but what kind of society are we if we now no one has the right to be wrong? Everyone must conform to one think, one thought, and thinking stops. Yeah, that was so beautifully Thank said. You. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm sure y'all at home might be wondering. Wow, who is this incredible, <laughs> articulate man <laughs> sitting beside Candace? So since you are new to the Heart audience, um, he has uh, Terry has helped us out kind of behind the scenes some, and he is a local director. But why don't you tell them a little bit about your experience, your background? Sure. Uh, I've been here for eight years mm -hmm. uh, working at Western as the professor of en entertainment design and technology. <laughs> yeah, um, but I'm also a director. I My bachelor's degree was in directing. Cool. My master's is in scenic design. Um, but I grew up in a small town in Ohio, near West Virginia and mm -hmm. Pennsylvania. Um, uh, in up there, we call it uh, Appalachia. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And so that's where I grew up, just northern Appalachia instead of southern Appalachia. Um, and um, I went into theater in high school and college. Uh, and I realized that storytelling um, was where I was meant to be yep. in the world, to be a storyteller, totally. both visually uh, and as a director. Um, after uh, I left Ohio, and I've been everywhere since New York City, um, out west. I've worked for several uh, years in Idaho, um, and uh, then um, decided that um, what I really wanted to do was to show other people how to do what I was doing. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, once I hit a certain age, you know, mm -hmm. I realized everyone I'm working with now is getting younger and younger yeah. and younger. <laughs> uh, but I also realized like they're, they have less and less skills yeah. than, than what we did. So it was, um, it was kind of a, a joy, but also um, 
a, a job that needed to be done, mm-hmm. I felt like to give the, this next generation of storytellers, yeah, you know, the tools th- these tools and craft mm-hmm. skills yep. that, um, you know, just aren't being taught yeah. anymore. Um, so uh, I got my master's degree when I turned 40 (laughs) and decided to teach and I've been teaching for the last eight years since then yeah so yeah that's a little bit about me Uh, my favorite kind of stories to tell um, are really things that deal with society Mm -hmm. um, and people that was why you see I'm so drawn to this play Um, plays with a with a big message I I go all the way back to to Greece and Aristotle right who who looked at theater as it it was medicine right it was science and you needed to do that society needed to come together and hear stories so they could relate everyone cries together everyone laughs together and when you leave there's a much greater sense of community yeah you feel that Um, collection yeah Mm -hmm. and so you know i think we've got lots of plays that do that you can watch beauty and the beast and you know cry at the end and your heart breaks and things (laughs) but i like a a deeper meaning you know i I like really to get into to deeper things such Mm -hmm. as social issues Yeah. yeah Well, as you guys know, we work with a lot of WCU students uh, as interns, as performers, as technicians, and they all have such wonderful things to say about you. Excellent. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> and uh, if, you all see, uh, if you all saw Assassins a few years ago, Terry did the uh, design, the set design for that, and actually worked with one of his students on... Um, yeah, one of our students cool. was the technical director yeah, that for time. that. Yeah, mm-hmm. so, yeah, and that was excellent, and, and we've been trying for the last several years yeah, to keep to growing right here, those mm-hmm. and those students. Uh, interactions because um, you know heart is the closest um, theater you know mm-hmm. actual professional theater let's call it a professional theater mm-hmm. that's what it is and it's mm-hmm. the closest to the school and it's a great resource and I love, for I us. love working with y'all well on this note of uh, set design and everything I want you to talk uh, a little bit about your concept for inherit the wind okay mm-hmm. um, so uh, I take this a bit back from the first production that I did of this in college okay. Uh, and we had th- the world's tiniest theater, mm-hmm. um, and, and I think the ceiling was only 10 feet tall. And so we didn't have a lot <laughs> of space, um, and so uh, we had put the, the audience on either side. And uh, of course, the, the play just needs, you know, like the town, mm-hmm. um, the town church mm-hmm. yard, and then, and then the court. And so we had done that at either ends. And uh, as we were, I was actually the stage manager on that production. Oh, nice. As we were running it, I realized it, it felt like a basketball arena yeah, right? right and really that's what the play was it was this fight between two teams mm-hmm. you have the, you know the team of fundamentalists and you have the team of um i guess you would say progressives but really they're just the, the team of the of three free thought yeah, that, yeah. Mm-hmm. um and it's a battle back mm-hmm. and forth you know who's going to get that last shot mm-hmm. right who's yeah, going to score totally. that final three pointer at the end oh god um, he's talking about a sports I know, theater right? person okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we're, for, we're for sports people too um so and and it's like that and and and, and it seems like society is that way too especially right now it yeah. seems like there's two distinct yes. teams and they're battling it out and and you know one of the main points of the, of the play um i think is when that happens everyone stops thinking Mm-hmm. No one's thinking. Not only yeah. are you know you may not be allowed to think, but yeah. you are so busy um, denouncing the other side yeah. that no one is thinking. And the most important thing about this play is it reminds us to think, mm-hmm. right? To yes, use yeah. the brains that yeah. we have. <laughs> yes. right? Whether you believe the good Lord gave that brain to you, or you believe that that brain evolved mm-hmm. over gazillions of millions of years, or yeah. wherever we're at now that we know. You have the right to use it and yeah. to think. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I, I am really excited to be able to see it now that we have everything set up. Yeah, so that's how we're doing this production. Uh, we've got the audience nice. on either mm-hmm. side. And yeah, it will feel like, you know, you're watching this mm-hmm. great game just play back and forth. Yeah, yeah, this battle yeah and some, some of the audience is even going to be part of the show. Yes. Don't worry, I know some of people are like, audience no, participation! No, it's, it's simple. <laughs> uh, in it's the uh, original simple. Broadway production, um, and I, I can't remember how they worked it. I don't know if they just randomly selected audience mm-hmm. members or if you could pay for that special mm-hmm. ticket. But um, the jury is, it's a 12 person jury, but in the script, there are only three jurors sat mm-hmm. um, that actually have named roles. So you either have um, you know, nine other people, actors just mm-hmm. there, 
who are just there to be in the jury, or you can fill that with audience members. And that's what they did in the original production. And it was a huge part of that original show. Mm -hmm. Anyone, um, you know, who uh, from back then who remembers that mm -hmm. production remembers that part of it, and yeah. especially if they got to be one of those people. So <laughs> you don't have to say any lines. You don't have to, <laughs> there's no spotlight on you. Exactly. You're just, just filling a seat in the jury <laughs> box. And actually, you do get a front row seat. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, that's so we'll the best be kind part. of asking people when they come in if they want to be a part of that or not. Yeah. So that'll be yeah, exciting. Yeah, yeah. Um, so let's talk about I know this is a big production, uh, and what has been some of the challenges that you've had to overcome for this? It is a big production, mm -hmm. right? Um, I know when I uh, we decided to do it, and and Candace ordered the scripts and called me and said, "Well, we have forty scripts." They uh, made <laughs> made you order forty four actually, yeah. be, because that's how big the cast is. We're doing it with a smaller cast. Yes. We're not having forty four, but I did have to get forty four scripts. Right. <laughs> the original cast had forty four people, had you know, uh, um, a horde of children, mm -hmm. um, while only two of those children actually have lines mm -hmm. in the play. Um, the original production had an actual organ grinder and a live monkey in the production. Yeah. Um, so uh, so a huge production, and, and it was done in the 50s. 50s was a time of realism. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was very important that they captured everything of the spirit from the 20s, mm -hmm. um, as far as costumes and, and props and the people on the streets and the extra people in the courtroom. And, and I get it, but <laughs> it's very hard for any theater to do today, yeah. especially Broadway, and it's not the point of yeah. the show, yeah, exactly. right? I don't need all those. I needed, I think we've got it down to 19 people. Mm -hmm. We needed 19 people to do the show, um, and, and really at our theater over there, when the 19 people yeah, are in the courtroom or yeah. in the, the town, it is full. Yeah. We really have a crowd, a boisterous crowd at those things. So that was one of the thing was how do I slim this down to that? Um, and it wasn't hard with the actors. Mm -hmm. And then it was, how do I slim this down, you know, scenically mm -hmm. as well? Um, I, I don't have a movie camera, you know. You, it's not like it was in the, the 1955 movie or, you know, the 19, there was another movie in the 70s. Yeah. Um, when they're on location and you get the whole town yeah. and, you know, <laughs> that's not happening. Um, so I realized that the most important thing is to just focus on the story, mm -hmm. you know, and, and the point that it's trying to make and that, um, the setting needed to just be that. Mm -hmm. I needed, um, so we went with the word icon, right? Mm -hmm. the, the play is based on an iconic event, mm -hmm. the Scopes Monkey Trial. Um, it's based on iconic people. Um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Clarence Darrow, and I'm, I'm missing the other one, but two huge politicians and lawyers of yeah, the time mm -hmm. that came. Um, iconic, uh, an iconic issue, mm -hmm. you know, uh, religion versus science. Yeah. Uh, and things. So, um, so that was, you know, what can I do to just focus, focus on the icon, iconography mm -hmm. of it? And so the one side, we just have a simple shape, you know, of a house or church building and three crosses. Mm -hmm. And that's it, right? Mm -hmm. You know, that's drive down pigeon you and it. you'll see yeah. the three crosses <laughs> and the church thing, right? And it, so it harkens, that's the icon. And then on the other side is the courtroom. Mm -hmm. uh, the courtroom will have um, a state seal. For Tennessee and an American flag and you know that's the state and mm -hmm. the science and, yeah. and on that side so then that's how we did it it's as simple as that um, everything focuses on the actor mm -hmm. uh, the actors and the acting and the storytelling um, and it's really really powerful yeah absolutely yeah. Yeah. yeah and I know another kind of challenge we had to overcome with this cast that I'd love to share with y'all because I know some of you probably are wondering why we did have to delay opening and really it was just a crazy series of unrelated emergencies <laughs> with the actors no one's fault at all and we just had to end up uh, we ended up replacing six people in the cast yeah. over about two weeks again no one's fault everyone no. i've talked to has absolutely loved working with you it's just literally like these health emergencies came up and so two of the actors we had to replace were the two lead lawyers and those are big parts and so really it just came down to okay what is right for this production what is right for these actors who have just you know 
made a big sacrifice, Absolutely. come in at the last minute and, Absolutely. you know, said, okay, I can do this. And we just wanted to give them a little more time really to learn the show. Absolutely. Um, yeah, yeah. So. And this is a problem world over. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah. It started with COVID, mm -hmm. you know, when every um, thing shut down and then we started again, but everyone would get sick constantly. Mm -hmm. And so actors would just go down yeah. nightly. Um, and so on Broadway, I mean, they literally now have packs of understudies. Yeah, you know, they exactly. hire many more than they used to. Yeah. Um, and, and every regional theater down to community theater across the country, you know, and has realized, wow, we need backup actors exactly. and, and understudies. I, I know Miss Can <laughs> I have seen Miss Candace on stage yeah. a couple of times, <laughs> and so that's You'll the way to. it is. Uh, I, um, we we did we, we cast months and months. Oh yeah, uh, we, in advance. We cast in February. To prep, yeah. and then unfortunately, um, the the illnesses and the mm -hmm. and other emergencies and things like that really just started to happen about a week or so before the rehearsals, rehearsals began. It was crazy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and, and once it cascaded to, you know, past the fourth or fifth person, yeah, we realized, let's just push opening yep. and we'll get some new people. Now, one thing I will say, and, and this is quite shocking to me, someone coming from um, Cleveland, the Cleveland theater scene up in Ohio and New York City um, and California, um, I'm used to having a wealth of actors mm -hmm. around and a wealth of actors to pull from. Um, coming here to the mountains, you wonder, you know, even mm -hmm. at even at the college, sometimes you know we're short a, 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 a particular type a particular yeah, type or age or, or look or something like that. Um, and so uh, I was a bit concerned at first, you know, like how can I cast this mm -hmm. first of all, and then how can I keep this cast um, within. I would say within 24 hours of every actor that went down, Candace had a replacement actor. Um, yep. Some of them I were able to meet beforehand mm -hmm. and, and hear them read some lines, and some of them I weren't. Mm -hmm. And every single one who has stepped in has been phenomenal. Yeah, it Just really amazing. was. Just amazing. The, it was the wealth of talent we yeah. have. <laughs> you know, between Colwee and, and Hendersonville it was amazing. is amazing. Yeah. And that they give their time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the actors who drive from Hendersonville and, and Asheville, <laughs> that they d didn't d devote their time here. But it just goes to show all of us, you know, what great theater it did. happens here. It honestly really was a, a big kind of boost for me, too, of just realizing, yeah, how many people I do know in the area, how much talent we have, and how um, uh, willing and excited they are to work yeah. at heart. It was really exciting yeah. to kind of be able to make those calls and have someone be like, yes, I'll do it. You yeah, know, like so just like that, like, oh, wow, okay. <laughs> we really, have ended up with an incredible, incredible cast. cast. Yeah. Um, and, you know, some of the new people have completely amazed me yeah, and, and took a character in a different direction than, mm -hmm. than I had originally thought. And, and it's just made the show a hundred times better. Yeah, well, on, on that note, let's talk about what has been your favorite part, either of the show or the process. Oh, or... how a fabulous story for this one. <laughs> oh, good. Um, so, uh, in auditions, um, we give what are called sides for the actors to come in mm -hmm. and, and read the parts. Um, and some of us have, have learned them beforehand, and, and some of them, you know, are reading them cold. Um, but there was one for the role of Mrs. Brady. Uh, it's the uh, um, prosecuting attorney. It's his wife. Mm -hmm. And um, it says very little throughout the play, um, more of just kind of mothers her husband the whole time. Um, but I, I, I had a feeling uh, about this character. Um, see, we've gone, we're now almost, we're what, 50 years past 55 now, even more, 60 something years mm -hmm. past there. Mm -hmm. So in 55, when they looked at the story of the Scopes trial and they, they said, oh, you know, what a great story to um, attack this idea of, you know, um, and McCarthyism and mm -hmm. the Red Scare. Um, here we are today, and we still have that idea of, of people, you know, not allowing people to think or, or jailing you for beliefs and um, stuff, but we have so many other issues now that have come yeah. up. We've evolved yeah. so much more, <laughs> and we have women's issues um, and, and, and gender issues and things, and the role of Mrs. Brady reminds me of my mother. Right, mm -hmm. and, and how my mother supported my father through his whole life, mm -hmm. you know, and devoted so much to that man, mm -hmm. and that that itself is worth something, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And, and you have this character in the script that I really wanted to show their worth. Mm -hmm. you know? So, I went to the film, the 1955 film, and they had added a scene between Rachel and and Mrs. Mm -hmm. Brady mm -hmm. that happens at night, and, and it comes after a, a very intense courtroom scene. Um, and Mrs. you learn a lot about Mrs. Brady 
in it and she becomes a real person. And so I have the actors read that in, in auditions. So once I cast the role, um, I got an email from the actress, um, from Vicky saying, Terry, I can't find that monologue in the script anywhere. Yeah. And then I realized, oh, it's because I had taken it from mm -hmm. the movie. Um, but it's so important. And yeah. Vicky loved it so much. Yeah. And it's literally one page of dialogue. Yeah. So so small. Um, we're at the point now with Inherit the Wind, I believe it's public domain. Mm -hmm. So you're allowed some liberties. Mm -hmm. um, I also think that the original authors, you know, yeah, would have, would have it, loved yeah. it. I'm sure they had a hand uh, in it. Uh, and, sure. and they had a hand in yeah, the movie as sure. well. So we have added that scene. Oh, great. And yeah, great. and so, yeah, so if you've ever seen the play before, we've got just a little bit There's even more for you oh, in this good. one. Yeah, and it's fantastic. <laughs> so that's my favorite so part. Yeah, yeah, and I, I, we were able to find, you know, this old war horse of a play, you know, that, that does its job in teaching us a lesson and find yet another lesson to yeah. come out of it, right? Theater, right? Uh, right? Theater is medicine. Yep. It makes us better, <laughs> yeah. Well, we have talked about so many things. I'm sure they are already dying to see the show, but let's bring it home to them one more time. Why should people come and see your production of Inherit the Wind? <sighs> Good question, <laughs> great question. They should come see it for the, for the reason that I am doing it. Um, th it is so timely mm -hmm. right now yeah. at this very second. Um, we find uh, our, ourselves, our country, in two camps, mm -hmm. um, and the shouting is so mm -hmm. loud that there's no thinking going on. Um, we have books being banned in schools, mm -hmm. um, so people are having their right to think taken away. You know, uh, if if you want to read a book and, and educate yourself about gender issues, you have every right mm -hmm. to do that. Mm -hmm. If you want to read your Bible and mm -hmm. believe creationism and everything in there as mm -hmm. factual, that is your absolute right mm -hmm. to tell someone, if you read that, if you think that, we will put you in jail or there is some kind of penalty, we will yeah. os ostracize you from society, yeah. is wrong. Yeah. That's not America. Yeah. Um, and, and that's not a good, a good society. Um, so what I'm hoping is, and believe me, I fight with this every day, right? You know, I, I, I love being honest. You know, I have, a f have family members in a different camp than I am. Yeah. And sometimes I have to realize what I say and that I just said, I'm in a camp. And I have to realize, mm -hmm. no, you have to step out of that camp. They have every right mm -hmm. to believe that. Yeah. They just don't have the right to tell me that I must Can't believe, believe that. that too. <laughs> yeah. And it goes both ways. Yeah. And one thing that this play does, and I believe that it's why, it was why it was written, but it's also the reason why it has survived 100 years. Next year will mark the 100th anniversary of the Scopes Monkey Trial. Yeah. 100 years ago, there was this trial of, because someone banned a science book. Mm -hmm. And 100 years later, we're dealing with some of these same issues mm -hmm. today. Um, the play, it attacks everybody. There's no winners, there's no yeah. losers, no one is right. The play attacks both sides, yeah. right? It's Ab completely in our theme of empathy this year. Absolutely, everyone each has sides. the right exactly. to be wrong. Exactly. Yeah, and it really brings that point home at the mm -hmm. end. So if you think that you're coming to see a show that's going to you know, attack the Christian faith or fundamentalism or um, rage against science, um, you know, or celebrate science over top of religion, you're absolutely wrong. Uh, it's a play that's gonna show you a battle between both. Mm -hmm. And, you know. And it's just really entertaining. And I mean, I keep the, saying oh, it's a nail-biting so horror drama, and it really is. Yeah. Like I said, I mean, it's just, um, these, the whole time you're just like. <gasps> yeah, Lawrence and Lee, so good. I, I believe, and, and my cast loves this uh, analogy, Lawrence and Lee were the uh, original, you know, creators of Law and Order. Totally. Right? <laughs> they found, you know, they were like, wow, you know, the entire world loves to watch a courtroom yeah. scene. Mm -hmm. And we know that for sure yep. in today's so we're world. Gonna get right? it to, yeah. And so they gave it, and that, it is so much fun. Yeah. It is so much fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like, you know, we we could top any law and order courtroom right? scene that you've seen. Yeah. It's yeah, the yeah, yeah. funnest medicine you'll take. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, thank you so much, Terry. So it is going to be playing August 9th through the 25th in our Fangmeyer Theater. Tickets, of course, are available at hearttheater.org or by visiting our box office. So we can't wait to see you guys there. See you on opening weekend, August 9th.
Thank you. Thank you, Terry. <laughs>